I'm going to show you how to make the wire cradle I used to set a dead magpie on for a decoy that uh, I use in my hunts. You're going to need a pair of shear cutters, a pair of vice grips or lockable uh, pliers, a pen, a ruler and an ordinary wire coat hanger. Everybody should have one or two of these hanging about their house. Uh, they're actually getting a wee bit harder to get now. But I see you can get them on the web, but plastic seems to be more the norm nowadays. Man, that workshop was a lot tidier back then compared to now. And yes, I've redone the voiceover on this, just bringing it up to date really. But anyway, as you can see, I started off by stretching the coat hanger out so you've got two long parallel lengths of wire, which are then clamped into the vise. Oh, did I mention you needed a vise? Sorry, my bad. But clamp it into the vise with at least two inches of untwisted wire above the jaws. Then lock your vise grips onto the two pieces of wire at the base of the hook where it starts to twist, and twist the rest of the wire in the same direction, so that you're creating about four inches of twisted wire in total. Now, straighten the hook out. OK, now we've got that bit done. Take the wire out of the vise. Then, using your cutters, snip the wire at the point of the bend. Then, take your vise grips and straighten the two ends out. These are going to be your legs, so the straighter they are, the easier they will be to push into the ground. OK, now bend the two long lengths of wire back up again about 90 degrees in opposite directions, basically creating a big T-shape. Now for a magpie sized bird, you want to mark about an inch and a quarter out from the central twist on each of the long lengths or legs. And you'll want the shorter twisted length that used to be the hook to be about seven and a half inches. Now you'll need something round to use as a form to bend the wire around. I'm using a one inch piece of steel pipe here, but a piece of copper pipe aluminium or even a wooden brush shaft might do. Take your vice grips and clamp the wire to the outside of the pipe at your inch and a quarter mark. Then bend the other loose end of the wire around the pipe in a clockwise direction below where you have it clamped with the vice grips at least one and a quarter turns so that you've made a full circle. Now, without taking the wire off of the pipe, loosen the vice grips and reclamp the two pieces of wire where it last touches the pipe. Then bend the loose end down 90 degrees. You need to do this to both sides. But on the opposite side, Remember to bend the wire around the pipe in an anti-clockwise direction. Clockwise, anti-clockwise. I can imagine a lot of people looking at their phone right now, scratching their heads. And then again, to finish this bit, clamp the two pieces of wire against the pipe and bend the loose end down 90 degrees. When you're done, you should have something that looks like an odd pair of spectacles, though I wouldn't try putting them on. Now, taking the decoy stand in both hands clasped around the rings you just formed, put your thumbs in the middle and bend up the way so you're causing a shallow U or V shape. Now, this will splay the legs out a bit, so you need to take your vice grips and clamp onto the top of the leg just below the ring and bend them back in again until they're parallel.
Then, again using your vice grips, clamp the decoy stand at the base of the shorter twisted section and slowly bend it up 90 degrees in a nice slow radius bend. Now, take your cutters and tidy up any unsightly bits. Watch your eyes here because these wee bits go off like bullets. Then cut a 45 degree point on the end of the shorter twisted section. This will allow it to push up into the bird's chin. Then give it a wee bit of a straighten up here and there. And as we say in Northern Ireland, there you go hey. You'll notice here that the twisted section on the rings is left open here. This is to allow the bird's leg to twist around it to get to the centre. Now to set it up with a dead bird, place the bird on its back and push the pointed section into the bird's chin. Then wind the legs around the ring sections like you're threading a key onto a key ring. Then push the legs into the ground until the bird looks as if it's standing on its own two feet. Give it a wee bit of a trim and tidy up the plumage in that and even cock the bird's head to one side. And voila! There you go! The first time I used this was in an area where the birds had got used to plastic decoys and it was so effective I couldn't tell which was the decoy and what was the live bird until one of them actually moved. Now if you want the decoy onto a hard surface like a, a gravel or concrete yard this isn't going to be much use to you as you'll not get in soft enough to push the feet down into. So what I do then is attach it to a base. Now this is just an old piece of uh, lead roof flashing. As you can see it's quite well weathered so it's uh, colours match the concrete yard fairly well and I just cut it out into a random shape but you can cut it out into whatever shape you want and I basically just pop rivet the wire cradle onto this and I'll show you how to do that now Firstly, you need to make two marks on either leg approximately four inches down from the base of the ring this should give the stand enough height to make it look as if the bird is actually standing on its own two feet. Then take your vice grips and lock it onto the wire at this mark and bend the bottom half of the leg in the way 90 degrees. Then do the same with the other side. For the next bit you're going to need something like a 5mm bar or rod to bend the wire around. I actually used a 5 inch nail with the point cut off it. Using the vice grips clamp the wire to the nail about half an inch out from the 90 degree bend we just made. Then twist the wire around the nail at least one and a quarter times so that you make a complete circle or ring. Do this with both legs. And no, before you ask, it doesn't matter whether you go clockwise or anti-clockwise at this stage. So those of you who are digitally minded are safe at this point. It's just really to give you a way of attaching the decoy stand either to a wooden base plate with a screw or a piece of lead with a pot rivet like I'm going to do. With that done, crimp the little rings you've just formed tightly together using the vice grips. Then trim the ends off with the cutters. Again, watch your eyes here boys. Set your decoy stand onto the base and mark where you need the holes drilled with a marker. I'm using a 5mm drill bit here as I'm going to use a 5mm diameter pot rivet. They're about 15mm long as it was all I had at the time. But basically push it up through the hole in the base plate, through the ring on the decoy stand, then put a washer with a 5mm hole over the top of it and tighten it down.
Now sometimes the pot rivets didn't tighten all the way down. Maybe a shorter size would have been better, but they certainly aren't going to go anywhere. Ho oh, ho, I'm struggling a bit here. Ah, got you, you boy. I almost broke a sweat there. Make her look pretty for the camera. And there you have it. Not too bad if I say so myself, hey. The lead really does match the concrete. Anyway folks, I hope you enjoyed this old footage revoiced over and look after yourselves and stay safe hey.